I don't have a presentation. I want to walk you through the project today. So also, we've had a couple, you may not believe this. Now, now audience is a little bit of a shock, but some of our OWASP speakers have gone over their time, a little long on the tooth, myself as well. So I'm going to do a shorter version of this because this is really, a, this is a documentation project, a little more open. This is the OWASH Cheat Sheet series. Again, this started with Eric Sheridan and Jeff Williams who wrote this cross site request forgery cheat sheet and the original XSS prevention cheat sheet, one of the most heavily hit pages in OWASH history. And, uh, and when I was an OWASH volunteer over like, over like 15 years ago, I'm like, this is some great material. We should do more of this. So I began to expand that series with the help of many other people. And so this recent version of it, uh, about, about two years ago, I stepped away from the project and brought in some other leaders. And they rewrote the infrastructure of the project, moving it from the old OWASP wiki to its own website and GitHub and uh, automation. Alar Lang is a big part of that. He's left the project. He helps a little bit. And, but Alar Lang helped rebuild our infrastructure at the Cheat Sheet series. Jacob Markowski is, he's like, he's like the Cheat Sheet series Buddha. All I'm saying is like, there, this is such an active product. There are so many people involved, hundreds of people involved. Leadership has changed a few times. It's a little chaotic at times. And Jacob is like the Buddha who sits there and gets work done and helps promote the project. So Jacob is the co-lead of this project right now. And I, I, I'm sorry he can't be here right now. I wish he was here, but Jacob's very like calm and peaceful and constantly supportive work is instrumental to keeping the project rolling. I also, who should be on this list is Ilar Lang. He rewrote our infrastructure to automate the editing and the creation of the site via scripting. And Ilar, you did a great job maturing the Cheat Sheet series. When, when I came back to the series, I made some really big and bold changes that upset some of the previous volunteers. I, I regret that. I felt it was necessary intellectually. There's always better ways to go about the process. So as like the leader, like, you know, I learned how to be a better leader along the way. And I just want to say thank you to all the previous volunteers who got us this far. So let's let's look at some of this, right? So here's the OWASH Cheat Sheet series. What, this is basically like a, another wiki inside of our wiki where we're maintaining each and every one of these pages with strong editorial leadership and individual maintenance of each of these cheat sheets by a little sub team. Some of the more active ones are like the authentication cheat sheet. And you can see how big how big this is, right? This is a this is a supplementary to to the ASVS requirements with more detail. So someone who works on, for example, we talked about the ASVS standard a while back, and we want a companion a companion a companion guide to explain the details. And my vision is we have an ASVS requirement that's one or two sentences and a cheat sheet series page that expands that requirement into into details, or we can point to other wiki pages that are being maintained in the community section of the OS wiki as well. And so let's look at, let's look a little, little bit behind the scenes here. Everything we're doing at the Cheat Sheet series is in GitHub. This, if you want to volunteer, um, this is where you want to be. You want to be in, in fact, let, let me walk through this. You want to be in the, the GitHub of the Cheat Sheet series, go to the Cheat Sheet page, and there they all are. And you can see we've had edits in the last month, We've had edits seven minutes ago. That's what, I, that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting here like getting my backlog cleaned up. So in each of these cheat sheets is managed independently. When when I, 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 I sometimes commit to mastering it, yelled at, and that's okay. We have enough people eyeballing this where, where changes are reviewed by the community, even when I least expect them to. And so what I'm doing right now is with, with Jacob is, uh, uh, and there we go. There's one of our other cheat sheets. Yeah, and I'm, we, we like we first wrote, for example, the access control cheat sheet, and I, I'm in I'm in the process of of redirecting that to the authorization cheat sheet, a recent contribution that rewrote that whole page. So I'm migrating that one over. What else do we? And here here I am fixing my my bad wiki markup. All right, there we go. So if you look at these individual cheat sheets. You know, this project has, has gone through an ebb and flow. The ebb is we keep adding detail to the cheat sheets, and then I remind folks that it's a cheat sheet, and I try to remove information that's extraneous. Our goal here is not to be a full, comprehensive discussion on each topic. It's really meant to be a cheat, where if you're new at 
say cross-site request forgery, the cross, cross-site request, well, not cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery prevention cheat sheet. And uh, like reading this once should, should, in a concise way, give you a complete discourse on this topic. So all I ask, dive into the cheat sheet series, read the guide, pass the word to other developers. There's hundreds of cheat sheets on secure coding, which is the main topic of it. it's defense. There's a few attack cheat sheets, but 95 plus percent, these are cheat sheets on how to prevent certain problems. And my goal is for you to hand this one page guide to a developer and they have a good idea of what the vulnerability is and really how to stop it in a complete way. I'm gonna end early, early right? If you have questions on the cheat sheet series, you can see me in Slack. You can email me at jim at owasp.org. You can just dive into the cheat sheet series uh, GitHub and start submitting PRs and issues. I'm really flexible. A lot of, uh, I, I wanna take your volunteer work any way we can. There's strong process, but you can just send me an email and I'll take care of it for you if you don't wanna do it yourself. Any way that you can contribute to enhance these cheat sheets, I think it's gonna help the foundation and the AppSec community in some way. Hey, I wanna drill down into one thing though. I just made this change recently. And, and just to show you how we're, how we're trying to describe some of the complexity, I'm gonna show you two cheat sheets. Here's the summary for request forgery. Number one, if your framework has built-in CSER protection, use that. That's usually the, your best step. Number two, if you have stateful web session software, use Synchronize or Token. If you have stateless API software that uses a web front end, that's where, that's where the double submit cookie pattern shines. And I recommend that you know, use same site. You're probably using it whether you like it or not. It's default in Chromium now in Chrome and many other browsers. So if you don't set the same site cookie, it's gonna be labeled as, uh, it's gonna be lax. And if you wanna remove it, you got a double set of cookie. You gotta set a cookie with same site none and set a cookie with no same site attribute, the same double setting, or it's not gonna work in all browsers. That's Google suggestions on the same site cookie attribute when you wanna support older browsers. Also, reauthentication helps any feature. The use of like origin-based or a referrer-based header verification, we accept that. I, I'm not recommending that so much anymore, and I'll remove it eventually. But you can look at a you can look at the the origin or refer headers to make sure it came from the right origin, and that can be spoofed, by the way, of course. Remember, cross-site scripting it can be used to defeat all C surf. So you got to be bulletproof from XSS. Fixing C surf is pretty easy. Fixing XSS is brutally hard to get right. And also, don't use GET for state changing operations. Let me go over one more cheat sheet um, as well. I'm going to go look at the, the password storage cheat sheet. And this is, there's a little bit of controversy here. I kind of, I manico this one. I kind of put, even though several folks were complaining about my changes, I pushed this one through. It's part of my job as an editor, not to do it in a mean way, but I, I went and worked with the Hashcat team, talked to Scoob, one of the main mathematicians, and got his advice on how to tune password storage algorithms. It, and he disagreed with the IETF, who has their own recommendations in the IETF password storage recommendation guide. And he showed me his math and a few people backed him up. So based on the Hashcat team's work, who's Hashcat? The main open source password cracking software of the planet, the best of the breed are part of that team. Jerry Gosney and a few others helped make this happen. Let's look at this. This is my advice and the Cheat Sheet Series advice on how to store a password. Number one, Argon 2 ID is what you should be using with a minimum of 15 megs of memory, iteration counted to one degree of parallelism, minimal. Argon 2i is not available, go ahead and use bcrypt with a work factor of 10 or more, but it's got a 72 byte limit and you're gonna pre-hash, bad idea. You gotta block, you gotta count 72 bytes in your password. That's hard to do. You don't know how many bytes a character is per se in every language easily. So I say stop using bcrypt, it's a junk algorithm. I'm sorry, it is folks, stop it. Stop this bcrypt's madness that everyone needs to do. Instead, use Argon 2 ID. Yeah. Okay. And if you if Bcrypt's not available or you're using Scrypt for legacy, minimum CPU 2 to the 16, minimal block size of 10, 20, 10 24 bytes, and parallelism parameter of one. If you're if you got a federal government, US government, sorry Europeans, US federal government compliance, FIPS 140, use PBKF2 with 310,000 iterations or an HMAC of 256. 
If you're going to use a different internal hasher, there's your minimum iteration count. It's math. So I really think that the password storage cheat sheet has migrated to the point where we're giving really specific recommendations to help developers write secure code. That's why the cheat sheet series exists. If you have a question for me, I'm easy to find. I'm jim at owas.org. I will take your volunteerism any way you want to deliver it. And we appreciate all of your support, contribution, and involvement in the OWASP Foundation. Also, OWASP survives on your donation. While you're here today, this is a free conference, spent a lot of money to put this on. So any kind of financial donation, becoming a member, becoming a corporate sponsor, or just giving us money because we are a 501c3 not-for-profit charitable organization, your support is how we keep the foundation running. And we appreciate all of your help. I'm done with my talk. And uh, again, if you have questions for me, you can find me at jim at owasp.org. And I give the remaining part of my time back, back to the Congress for the next speaker to make up some time for our conference today. Thank you so much, everybody. Rock on.